Welcome to Idaho Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz coming to you from Boise, the state capital. And all I can say is I'm not worthy because Betsy Russell is here. She is the Boise Bureau Chief for the Spokesman, uh, the Spokane Spokesman Review. Her blog, Eye on Boise. I mean, if you want to follow Idaho state politics, you're really it. You are uh, the go-to journalist. It's kind of become that way, yes. It has. And let's talk about that because okay. you've been a journalist for a while and back in the last decade, somehow you figured, you know, there's something here. What happened in the last decade? Well, I, I have to say, it, it even went beyond the last decade. Okay. Um, the Spokes Review actually asked me to start the Eye on Boise blog back in 2004. And at the same time, Wait, we started... But you said blog. Yes. In 2004, blog? I, was that word even oh, well no. known? <laughs> it, was, it was definitely um, a new trick right. for me to learn. Right. I had been a print reporter my entire career. Of course. I was accustomed to you know, writing for deadline at the end of the day, and right. my story would come out in the paper the next day. And suddenly, everything changed. Mm. I was reporting things right as they happened. Right. And it was, it was amazing the way that it worked. I, one interesting thing is if I ever got something wrong, people told me instantly, wow. and I immediately right. corrected it. But that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but for example, recently the governor gave his yearly state of the state. Mm -hmm. I followed you on your blog, and you were blogging live. Mm -hmm. And what was nice about it was you kind of broke it up into sections. So when the governor was talking about education, you had a blurb on education. Mm -hmm. Then when he moved to, I think, cybersecurity, you had a, an entry on that. Then That's when he right. moved to whatever it may have been. And so it's, it's very digestible. Mm -hmm. And then I don't mean to be too much of a sycophant, but if I may. <laughs> but then what you also do is you will have the foresight to click to provide a click through for mm -hmm. an article you wrote recently or a colleague wrote sure. recently for more depth. Absolutely. Um, the blog itself, uh, with all the years that I've been doing it, has become really kind of an amazing research tool for me. <laughs> I find is. that if I want to look right. up, I, the first experience that brought that home to me was when I called a legislative staffer and said, I can't remember what happened a number of years ago on this topic. And the staffer said, you know what? I read about that on Ion Boise. <laughs> did, did they know that was you? <laughs> yes. Did they okay. Yes, they did. Right. And so, you know, I can just search for Ion Boise in a keyword, and there's what I wrote about it back then. And you provide those keywords. You can see oh, yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Um, I will say I was speaking with some elected official, a very high elected official. I think it's okay I say his name is Brad Little, Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> and we were talking about how the blog has become a resource, not just for consumers, but for political staff, for the elected officials. Because look, it is written in a way that is accessible, not partisan one way or the other. You're providing the facts. Right. And it allows us to, in real time, figure out what's going on or to look back a few years. That's right. And I think that, that initially, a lot of blogs really were opinion blogs, and a lot right. of them still are now. And mine and is fine. very different. No. Um, mm. I'm a newspaper reporter, right. and so my take is simply to report what's happening, to report the news. And over the years, my blog has evolved, and I've noticed that one of the most popular things that I do on the blog is when I live blog right. an event like the State of the State or even one of the big legislative hearings on a hot topic at which lots and lots of people come from all over the state and testify. And I won't report absolutely every one and every word they said, but I will give a sampling of, of those who testified and what they said. But let me ask you, as the event is happening live, mm -hmm. how have you come to learn what's important? Because you don't know what's coming up. Right. You know what already happened. You may have an agenda, but wow, that's got that's a skill. Well, I've been doing this for a rather long well time. Well stated, <laughs> but you know what I'm getting at. I mean, but that's sure. a new skill. Because yeah. usually when you write an article, you know the ending. Mm -hmm. When you're blogging, you don't know the ending necessarily. That's true. And so you got to figure out and kind of anticipate what may be coming up. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> you just do. I, you know, I, mm. I, I just go with it. Right. And I, I, I was a state house reporter covering the Idaho legislature right. for a number of years prior to starting the blog. Of course. Of so course. I have my sources. Right. I have my experience. I, I know kind of how the process works. And that helps me to quickly make a judgment as to, oh, this is happening, it's news. Right. I need to get this up on my blog, and I do. What, I also happen please. to type very fast, and ha that helps. Ha <laughs> clearly. And so no editor, presumably. Mm -hmm. You're your own editor. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if there's an error, it's not a big deal. 
you, you you correct it and it will say correction. It's kind of nice how in some ways we have that ability in the media. I feel like the public's a little more forgiving because they know how fast we're working. Is that fair? And I I suppose I should say mm. that I have been an editor, and I was an editor for the Spokes Review. I was their Idaho editor ah, for almost five years. I see. And back early in my career, I was an assistant city editor at the Idaho Statesman. I, I was also a reporter there. And so I've been in both roles. And so I think that makes it a little easier for me to edit myself. Of course, of course. Um, because I've been in kind of both mm -hmm. chairs. I know that it's flying without a net <laughs> when you're writing a blog without you know, a check on it. And some publications haven't gone there. Um, but we felt pretty comfortable with it, and it's worked out very well for us. So do you still have the opportunity, I know the answer, but I'll ask anyway, to write, let's call it longer articles, articles that will appear in the print edition? Absolutely. You do? Okay. Yes. So, I mean, really, that's, I, there are now two main functions of my job. Please. There's, there's the job I had before, writing right. articles for the newspaper, which I still have, of course. and writing the blog. And there's interplay between those. For example, with the state of the state. I was live blogging that all the way through, and afterwards I might take a picture of someone and post their reaction to right. it, and by the end of the day, I have developed a complete story on what the governor proposed, what the reactions for, uh, f to it were, what the implications are for northern right. Idaho, and put that into a good story form that can run in the next day's and paper. And you take from this post, from that post, and there's your article. As we look at the 2017 session, what do you see as the issues that are on top of mind for our friends in the legislature and the executive branch for that matter? Sure. Well, I think it's very clear that education is the number yeah, one issue so here, and, and all sides pretty much agree on that. Right. We've seen a coming together in, over the last few years where education used to be the source of a lot of strife and disagreement mm. in the state house. Now, most all parties are on the same page, which is kind of amazing to and see. And when you say parties, do you mean within the Republican factions or Republicans and Democrats, executive branch, legislative branch? Everybody. Wow. So we're talking not just Republicans and Democrats, but also the executive and legislative branch, and what's been referred to as the stakeholder in the education system, right. the school administrators, the teachers, the school boards, the parents. There's, they've all kind of come together behind this five-year plan right. that the governor's task force proposed, and we're in the third, we're going into right. the third year of that, and it involves major investments in improving teacher pay and making other changes in schools in Idaho. And just a few years ago, we had reforms pass and then be rejected by voters. We're in a very different place now. That being said, if we look at education in Idaho, and I read this on a blog called Eye on Boise, <laughs> you told us that the Education Week ranking says that Idaho is 48th in the nation and gets a D minus. We rank very low on pretty much every comparison and a lot of that is because of our low per pupil spending. Idaho's mm. state government is small. But is it fair to compare New York spending to Idaho spending? The cost of living is greater. I don't know. I mean, well, that's true. I mean, there there are other factors, and if you look at test scores, for example, Idaho actually does pretty well mm. in student test scores. There are all different measurements, but there are many things that we just plain don't do in Idaho that they do in other states, such as provide early childhood education, which preschool. I know is a big um, focus for the Democrats. Right. They've right. been focused on that in their response to the state of the state. And not only the Democrats, but the business community has been mm. for several years now um, developing plans to get more focus on early childhood education in Idaho but you know a number of years ago in Idaho we didn't even have kindergarten so we're making our way there <laughs> her name is Betsy Rutzel she is the Boise bureau chief for the Spokane spokesman review her blog outstanding read it eye on Boise my name is Brad Pomerantz thank you so much for joining us on Idaho local edition